Leave about old iron off road. Just uh, out here in the shop working on this uh, big old pig on a Saturday. Uh, had a couple days uh, towards the end of the year between projects, so that's a lie. I didn't have any time, but uh, I decided to take time um, to get my own personal project uh, at least stopping. Um, it runs and drives. Well, it runs and steers. So stopping was the uh, was the next um obstacle waiting on some drive shafts uh just want to do a quick video on some more uh i did a video on the uh that shake and break the other day just want to do some do a video on uh on another tool um i know we're all uh any of us car guys are usually also into tools especially tools that uh that help us get the job done quicker and uh add like kind of a more professional aspect to our uh to our end game and our our skill level if you will uh working on this uh working on the rear disc brakes on this rig uh you got a 14 bolt rear um with a uh with a three quarter ton uh gm uh disc brake conversion on it so kind of what you can see here is we've got uh obviously we've got the caliper rotors and then we've got some uh some soft flex lines made a little uh little retainer tab here that this uh the end of that line clips into it's probably a little dark under there i do apologize so right now what i'm doing is I'm got, i've got to bridge the gap between this soft line and then over there you can uh you can see our flex hose coiled up now i'm a snob when it comes to a lot of things um brake lines electrical wiring there's a few things that I really, really, really try to take uh, take pride in, um, and things that I can't stand when I see people do a poor job at it, just because there's no no real excuse. Um, what we do, this is stainless line. I don't always use stainless. Uh, I've been using a lot of the uh, nickel copper uh, blend brake line lately. It's really nice stuff, low corrosion. I mean, actually, probably no corrosion. Um, I used to use poly armor. Uh, that was basically all that was available. Um, this is stainless. The rest of this uh, rig, believe it or not, as ugly as it is, I did put a stainless kit on it. Um, so I'm making uh, making, some, making those back lines out of stainless also. And then here's some of the tools that I, like I said, wanted to go over. You know, the coils and brake lines are super cheap um, to buy them in coils. So one of the tools that I have is this, this uh, straightener. Um, basically how this thing works is you take a coil, insert it in this little guy, and you just crank the, the adjuster wheel down until it puts enough pressure on it that when you roll this through, it takes the coil of line and straightens it out. And you can try hand straightening this stuff, but it's not very uh, fun to deal with. Um, you usually end up with kind of a wavy mess and it's just not, you know, again, with me being a, a snob on this stuff, um, lay that light behind me. It's not bothering me guys too bad. I don't know if I can put you anywhere else where you can see me. I'll try to stand in front of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not gonna, hmm, it's not too bad. Anyway, um, yeah, you can try straightening this stuff by hand, but it's not very fun. You end up with a wavy mess. And again, like if you're trying to do a nice professional job, you know, you want to start with a, a good solid straight line before you uh, before you start uh, playing. Now, next tool I wanted to go over. This is probably I hand flared lines for years. Um, and that's fine, and there's still a place for a hand flare uh, underneath a vehicle. Like if you're trying to repair a line, something like that, and it's really tight quarters, you can't get in there. Sometimes a hand flare is what you have to use. But uh, like if I'm doing stuff on the bench and I'm making custom flares, um, this toolkit is by far the best there is. Um, this is the Master Cool uh, hydraulic flaring tool set. Um, you can see the part number here that I actually have is the, I don't know if I'm focusing in, 72475. Um, and then you can add on tools. This one has most of the components in it. Like I bought the more expensive one, not the most. Um, I think this thing was like close to 300 bucks, which I know if, you know, again, this stuff's not for everybody, but if you're 
like doing a full, you know, resto and you're going to hand flare all your own lines and you're wanting a really nice job, then it's worth the money. Um, you know, like I said, I, I do this a lot. So nice tools not only save time, they save customer money in the long run because I'm not spending so much time dicking around with like trying to hand flare lines and, and yada, yada, yada. And also you end up with a better, you end up with a better flare every time. Perfect flare. No cattywampus flare, nothing. I mean, you know, I can fl hand flare lines probably as good as anybody, and you still don't get a perfect flare every time. It just doesn't happen. So, um, this this is definitely the way to go. Uh, what you've got is you've got a set of dies that you can see. I mean, it starts at three sixteenths all the way up to like half inch break. Actually, it may go bigger than that. It may go up to three eighths break line. Um, I've got GM uh, fuel line forming. I've got metric bubble flares, uh, push connects. Um, believe it or not, I use the shit out of the push connects um, on the fuel injection stuff. When I do a fuel injection conversion, I do a lot of steel lines. I don't run long runs of rubber. Um, we'll stub steel fuel line like in the engine compartment somewhere and stub it out by the pump. And then we'll just do push connect fittings from there. So really nice, clean way to do it. Um, and then you've got uh, this part of the tool, which is the hydraulic uh, pump. And this is what takes the, the work out of it. This is the, the, uh, the piece of the pieces. So let's see, I think I got you out of that lot, at least most of it. We're not all fancy here. I've actually got a really nice GoPro Hero uh, 7 black fancy in the house. And you can see I'm using my cell phone because, uh, yeah, that's why, because. But uh, anyway, so here's a quick kind of overview. Now we're starting, you always remember to put your fittings. Oh, and I buy these in bulk too. I've got line nuts i buy a bunch of different sizes i can't stand adapters like if i need a specific size line nut for like a master cylinder i put <laughs> the right size on there again some of this is ocd coming through like i'm not suggesting that everybody be as anal as i am but i mean people do pay me to do this for a living so you know obviously you get you want to be paying for a professional level job you don't want to be paying for some monkey shit that anybody can do in there their driveway but uh so the way this thing works is i've got a die block in there you can see the die and then this little lever here actually flips over and that's your your tube stop so die you gotta make sure the dies turn the right way also which that if you can't figure that out you're stupid so tubing in there and then you just tighten this guy down and it's not like on the uh hand flares like you got to get pretty stupid with the tightness that you crank the uh, the little T handle down. This thing does pretty good. Inside of this die, there's a ton of little ridges, and you've got a ton more grip strength. You know, on that little uh, hand flare tool, you've got like maybe a half inch of clamping force, and this thing's got you know probably double or triple that. So we're gonna snug this down. Like I said, it's got to be pretty tight, but you don't have to get really retarded with it. So we're going to flip that out of the way. And then you can see there that the tubing is flushed up in the end. Fold this little guy out of the way. And then we're going to select. We're going to need this cone. That's the last step. And the first step is this little guy, 3 16th die. Or, yeah, flip that over, put it in there. You see that? You just tighten this down. And then you pump, pumping the handle. This is stainless steel too. So, I mean, if you've ever tried to hand flare stainless, you know how like next to impossible it is. So there's the first step. You can see it's pushed the first flare down in there. And then this you can actually turn to get it back to wherever you need to if the dies are too short or too long or whatever. You can kind of position, use this to position it. Then you go in with the cone. And this is going to finish the flare.
And you can see that is a perfect flare. So, once again, um, good tools are definitely worth having. Um, and they save time and money. So, if you're, uh, if you're in the market for a, uh, for a nice hydraulic flare tool, or if you're tired of hand flaring lines, um, this is the stuff that I use and uh, works really well. You know, none of this stuff, like these got, you know, I paid for this. This is not stuff that anybody's given me or, you know, whatever. It's just the honest, uh, honest review and uh, honest uh, opinion on, on quality tools. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Master Cool universal flaring tool set the one i've got is a 72475 i think there's one above this that comes with uh, the only dies that this one is missing is uh the uh trans um trans cooling block and i think it comes with like two maybe five maybe three eighths five sixteenths they may even be metric i don't know but there's not very much missing out of this kit so uh yeah like i said uh hopefully uh Hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and uh, maybe this will help you make an opinion on a, or making a decision as far as uh, which, which uh, brake flare and toolkit you're going to get if you were in the market for one anyway. So enjoy.